Hello, this is Carl from National RV Detroit. I'm going to show you through your new Salem 263 BH XL 2020. Okay, we'll start here on the door side. You have two doors, obviously. Power awning with a LED light strip. You've got outside speakers. This is the range hood vent right here. Um, there's a baffle inside here. Let's see if I can show you. And right now it flaps freely. I know it's very difficult to see because of the lighting. So when you're using the, the range hood, you want it flapping freely like this so it'll vent. But when you're not using it, you'll push it shut like this and just push it shut so it doesn't uh, you know, flap when you're going down the road or, or that sort of thing. So uh, also we have the, that's the vent for the furnace. This is a port for a spray nozzle for water. I'll just, the nozzle should be inside this compartment over here. This is your is power for the outside. Okay. This, let me back up so you can see it here. Okay. This is an outside kitchen. So you have a griddle here. Now this griddle has a hose, let me see if I can show you here. This is a quick connect fitting here. This is the LP hose, right? The other end, let me excuse my camera work here for a second. The other end fits down here into this one right here. So it just pushes it together like an airline and then you'll, you'll turn it on. Whoops, I'm sorry, I'm not pointing up. Let me do this. You'll connect it here and then you'll just turn it on like that okay um, while I'm down here uh, this is the the uh, dump valve for your fresh water tank uh, when you fill your fresh water tank if you're leaving the campground you generally will dump the water so you don't have to drive around with it um, while we're talking about that I'll I'll move up here let me see what's in your refrigerator first just a dorm refrigerator let me bring this down here okay so this is the fill for your fresh water tank. There's two ways to use this trailer with city water, which is pressurized city water, and you can use this fill tank and, uh, and uh, fresh water tank, and you can just basically pump your own water. This is, this is where you fill it right here. You'll take the cap off, fill it up. The, the, the type of place you'd use that is basically at a state park. Um, some of the older state parks have, uh, don't have plumbing on the campsites, but they have a fill station when you first go in. Uh, through the gate so you would fill it up at the fill station then you can use the onboard pump to pump your water inside so you, it works just like you have city water except you're just carrying it on board um, most of the time you're going to be using the regular city water which has got a fitting on the back which I'll show you in a few minutes but this one right here is for for your demand tank your fresh water tank okay all right I'll try to get everything here this is your hitch, which we'll show you uh, how to operate upon delivery. You have stabilizer jacks, one in each corner. they got a three-quarter inch hex on it, so you can use a three-quarter inch socket or a crank. This one comes with, let's see what we got here. This one comes with a drill attachment, three-quarter, so you can use your drill. This crank below it goes in the tongue jack. If it fails, you can take the cap off the top of the power tongue jack and crank it manually and this other one has to do with the awning which is something you'll have to read about or watch the video because it's difficult to explain so um, it's just to get yourself out of trouble basically if, uh, if it happens to fail this is a solar battery charge report um, basically this is a Furion brand and you can plug the panel right into here and it'll just charge your battery so it's strictly for charging your battery if you choose to get a panel all right let me go a little farther here. This is your power tongue jack I was telling you about. Basically just up and down and you have a light on it also. When I told you you could crank it manually, that's where you would do it. I don't know if you can see in there, but that little crank inside the pass-through compartment will actually um, fit right in there. Okay, you have two 20-pound LP tanks. Let me back up. Okay. You'll turn them on, counterclockwise to turn them on. This is the LP regulator that regulates the gas down to the proper pressure for this trailer. Um, 
This is an automatic changeover regulator. So basically it's going to draw the door side tank down first and when it's empty it'll switch to the off door side tank. You'll be able to hear which one it's pulling from. So once you're pulling from this off door side tank you'll know it's time to get this one filled. Uh, this is a deep cycle marine battery right there if you can see it. And let's see if I can get a picture of it in here. This is your kill switch for the battery right there. So if we're looking at the battery there you can see go this way. Right now you can see it's on. You turn it to the off position and it kills the battery. The reason you would want to do that is because the carbon monoxide and LP gas detector are hardwired to the battery. So even if you shut all the lights and everything off, it's still going to draw power from your battery when you're in storage. So you'll only turn this battery off when you're in storage. Otherwise, you leave it on. Because uh, you want it on because when you're plugged in at the campsite, the uh, power converter will, will charge your, uh, your battery up. And when you're towing it, your tow vehicle will charge it. So you leave it on except when you're in storage, okay? All right, let's move around. These are just your stickers that tell you the VIN number and the build date and, and uh, model number, things like that. Your slide out. Now this slide out, you'll notice, has brackets on it with covers. This one is, is, is already has the brackets on it to put a slide topper on. So if you want to add a slide topper, we sell those. You can talk to uh, your, your salesman and uh, we can fix you up with a slide topper. Uh, if you choose okay now this is one thing I wanted to show you with the stabilizer jacks I couldn't on the other side because it's hard to see this yellow piece is called a strong arm that's normally an add-on but with this particular trailer it comes as part of the package so it just stabilizes the jack so it can't move forward and back as easily it takes that motion out of it right so this t-handle here let me see here should always be loose when you're, when you're bringing the jacks up or down, right? So when you get down, when they're, when they're all the way down and you put some tension on it, you don't lift the trailer with the jacks, you just, you just kind of, uh, you're, you're stabilizing it. So once you get it in the down position, you'll tighten this, and that way it'll, it'll stiffen it up and take the wiggle out of it. There's one of these on each jack, so you have to do that with each one, but it really does help take the shake and the wiggle out of the trailer, so it's a good thing. Um, this is your power cord, 25 feet long. It's got a 30 amp plug on the end. Now we give you an adapter to adapt it down to a 15 amp so you can plug it in at home. But you have to remember that the air conditioner draws more than 15 amps. So uh, you can use everything in the trailer when you're plugged in at home except the air conditioner. If you use it, it'll eventually pop your circuit breaker. So you can't really run your air conditioner on a 15 amp service but you can run everything else in the trailer so okay this is the water heater this particular model works on both gas and electric oh no I'm sorry let me see here I'm sorry I correct that this one is a gas water heater um, and the switch to operate is on the inside the reason it's drained is because uh, it was winterized and there was antifreeze in the system and this this uh, plug here goes in this hole right here all right this thing on the end is an anode rod which is a sacrificial rod which just basically minerals will attack the lining of the tank uh, because you're using a lot of uh, well water and different kinds of uh, minerals in them around the country so this is a sacrificial rod it's an easier target than the lining of the water heater so it'll, the minerals will attack this and eat it away that's what's supposed to happen um, if after it gets to the point where it's just about gone you'll replace it it could take years a couple years three years whatever um, so before you use the tank you have to put this in there uh, and fill it up you never run the tank without water in it right uh, also you can't pump antifreeze into the tank so when you're winterizing you're going to have to bypass the water heater. There's valves on the back of this water heater that uh, will allow you to bypass it. So uh, when you pump antifreeze in in the winter time, for the winter time, um, it won't go into this tank. If it goes into the tank, it'll leave a really foul taste that is very difficult to get rid of. So you never want to get antifreeze into the water tank. That's important to remember. You have to educate yourself a little bit on winterizing it. We can talk to you about it. Um, you can look at videos online. You can talk to your camping friends, that sort of thing. Um, but it's very simple, but the, ba the main rule is you don't get antifreeze in the water tank, okay? All right, so while I'm standing here, okay, these are your dump valves. 
Now this is the black valve, the large one with the black handle is for the black tank. The black tank is toilet water and waste. Um, these gray ones are gray tanks. One, the front one is probably referred to as a galley tank, which is a gray tank, and the other one is sink and shower water. Basically, the, the gray tanks hold sink, sh sink water, shower water, and um, the, this, like I said, this particular trailer has two because the galley is so far away from the bathroom. Mostly, generally, they just have one, but this one has two, so you got double the storage. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to dump, you're going to put your hose on here. This cap comes off, your, your hose goes here and into the dump station. Then you're going to pull your black valve and dump the black tank first. Then you're going to pull the gray valves second because the gray water is cleaner than the black water. That's so you're just going to help rinse out your, your um, hose. Then you'll close the gray valves and you'll open the black one. If, it was if you closed it, you'll open it. And then you'll come back here. And this is a black tank flush here, this bottom one. Let me open it for you. So the dump station will have a hose, it's just a garden hose. It'll screw on there and you can turn it on and then it's got jets inside the black tank that'll clean it out even better, clean the sensors better so you get a good reading on the monitor panel. Um, it's just a good thing to use. Um, so the last thing you do will, the last thing that you'll do is actually, like I said, you'll hook the hose up to there and always make sure that the black tank valve is open when you turn on this water so you don't build up too much pressure inside. As a matter of fact, that's what this sticker says right here if you read it. Okay. Now I showed you where you fill the potable water on the other side of the trailer, uh, the fresh water tank. Uh, this is uh, your city water hookup. So your, this, your hose, your water hose is well, it's just like a garden hose, same fittings, except the, uh, the uh, drinking hoses have a different lining in them so they don't taste like a garden hose. But uh, uh, the fittings on it are on both ends are the same. So okay. All right. So that's just cable and satellite in. They're just coax, and there's a counterpart for it inside by the television set. Okay. For each one, you have your backup camera. I don't know what I can't get a good picture because of the light, the back lighting. But your backup camera will be activated when you turn on your running lights. That's the thing. You you turn on your headlights, and you can't use with most trucks. You can't use the automatic headlights. You have to physically turn it to the on position to light this up. Um, so you, you can use it when backing up or when driving down the road or both, whichever you prefer. Okay. All right, while I'm standing here, this is a very important thing and I'm gonna tell you, you have to inspect the roof of your trailer. So um, you get a ladder, you can walk up there. You figure when you winterize, uh, in the fall, when you're dewinterizing in the spring, you're going to go up there, and then in the middle of the summer. So three times a year, you'll go up there, and you'll look around. Make sure that the, the fabric, the uh, membrane on the roof is in good shape, and you'll check all the seals. Every attachment on here and every molding is sealed with a lap sealant called Dicor. Um, that's what you use to repair it if you need to. Odds are you won't have to repair it for years and years, but that's why you... You, you still check it three times a year to make sure. The idea is to keep any water out of the inside of the trailer. So uh, you're going to go up there and check all the seals. And uh, if need be, if they start to crack or separate, you're either going to have to take care of it yourself or you're going to have to bring it in and have it done. Um, some year, you're going to have to do some sealing on the trailer. You just don't know when, so that's why you inspect it. And that's not just this trailer. That's every trailer made. So they're all like that, and they all have to be part of owning the trailer is is inspecting the seals that's very important okay so let's go inside first of all you have on the back you have just standard steps this is a the new style step it'll fold right into the trailer um, and uh, they're very stable you can adjust these steps there's a I don't know if you can see it but there's a there's a pin right here on each side and you can slide these up and down if the ground's uneven while you're camping, you can adjust a little bit so it, it's in the right position. Okay, so here we are inside, and we're going to send the slide out out. So here is the is the slide out switch right here. There we go. So now it's going out. Always make sure there's no cupboard doors open. 
or anything in the way that's going to get broken. The, this cover door here is one you'll you'll pay attention to. And there you have it. This next one here is the power awning. So we're going to send the awning out. I'll try and show you over here. You're just going to send it out till you can see the roller tube. Um, I'll just keep going with it. There we go. Right about there. Okay. One feature you can see there's a on this awning arm both there's a knob on both arms that you can use to pitch the trailer with or I'm sorry pitch the awning not the trailer just pitch the awning so you'll loosen it up it should always be loose then you would just bring it down and then you'll tighten this up and it'll stay in this position um, just make sure you always loosen these up before you bring it in but so you can do you can pitch it down at a steeper angle or or slightly to the rear or slightly to the front whichever you you want so okay all right so this light here is your LED strip for your awning okay this one here let my fingers on lights up oh let's see here I guess we don't have, we have to physically turn it on Okay. The buttons have, or the lights all have a button in the middle that you'll you'll um, push to turn them on. Um, every one, every light has a button in the middle, so you can select which ones you want to go on and off. Um, while I'm standing here, I told you about the water pump inside for the fresh water tank. That's right here. Okay. The water heater, which runs on gas, you light it right here. Always make sure that there's water in the tank before you do that. Um, you can check your levels here. Okay, like so. Fresh, black, gray, and galley. The galley is the gray tank for the sink here. And this checks the battery. Um, so as they fill up, they graduate up in one-third increments until it's full. Once you get to two-thirds, you're gonna have to start thinking about dumping them. Okay, all right. Okay, so we have a Furion radio plus a uh, fireplace. The fireplace works on uh, AC power, 110 AC. It has a remote, or you can use the buttons on it. Um, I'll just turn it on here. Okay, so right now it's H is flashing. If you can see it, let me let me do it this way. You can change the uh, different colors of the fireplace here. Okay, uh, you can change the fan speed here. Right now it's on high. You can go off or to low. And that's just the fan inside this uh, heater that, that blows out through here. Okay, um, you can also set the temperature with a the thermostat right here. It goes up in five degree increments or down in five degree increments, whichever way you're going. Um, so you can set that. Plus it has a timer. You can see on the thing here there's a little timer right there. Uh, you can set it to turn on and turn off, you know, when you want to. You could set it to, to turn on, uh, let's say, um, you know, 15 minutes before you get up in the morning, for example, to take the chill out of it on when it's getting cooler outside, okay? All right, so the, the radio is Furion. Okay, you've got two zones, zone one and zone two. This has also got a remote with it. Zone two are the outside speakers. Zone one is the inside speakers. There's an AM and FM radio. It has Bluetooth, so you can hook up wirelessly and stream. You can stream through this USB here. You can put, you know, all your albums or 40 albums on one stick and take them all with you. This HDMI is an in if you need to go into the system. And there's also a headphone jack and a, they, we used to call this, I think, an eighth inch analog. It's been, it's been a while now, but you can also, it's also got an analog plug on it to go into the system. Um, it basically does everything you need for camping, so. Um, also, this here is the signal booster for your digital antenna for your television. Um, it should always be green like that. You can turn it on and off, but you always want it green because uh, uh, 
it'll it won't get a good picture unless it's on so this is telling you that you're pre-wired for Wi-Fi there's another plate on the roof for the antenna it's an option you can look at the options online by, go, by going to kingconnect.com and basically it's pre-wired um, we sell them if you're interested uh, you can put an antenna on the roof and you put a router here and um, basically you create your own network inside the trailer and it's a really good signal booster so public campground Wi-Fi is notoriously weak but it'll really boost the signal quite a bit so it's a it's good if you use a lot of Wi-Fi something to think about anyway okay um, let me stand up here okay so this was the light for the for over here I'll show you the switch and that's for the slide out there okay all right this couch jackknifes flat into a bed by going like this you just grab it down here you jackknife it flat let me back up so you can see it like so you got some cubbies back there this uh, u-shaped dinette will turn into a bed also you remove these poles and drop the table down onto the edge here and then fill in the space with the pillows and you have another bed there um, you've got storage underneath with totes um, let's see here this here I just want to show you a little bit here I can only go into basic details but um, this right here is your water pump okay that's what you use to draw the antifreeze into the system like I said you'll have to educate yourself a bit on it um, Let me see here okay the microwave works like any other microwave there's nothing unique about it um, the range you spark to light it basically so you'll turn it on I hope you saw that I'm not paying attention to my camera work here you can see it just lights you can turn the next one like so and spark it so you just spark it to light it you turn this clockwise okay now the oven you have to light with a grill lighter right so there's a lighter with a long neck on it and I don't know if you can see it here I'm trying to get your back here's the pilot light so basically what you'll do is you'll go to pilot here right then you depress it then you'll light the pilot light with a grill lighter and when it lights you hold it for you know 10 15 seconds to heat it up and then you go to whatever operating temperature you want and it was, it'll, I'm sorry, every temperature you want, and you, it'll cycle through like a, um, like a regular oven. But when you go to off, the flame goes out, and so does the pilot light. So each time you use it, you have to light the pilot light. It took a long way to get there, but that's the bottom line. you got to light the pilot light each time. Okay. Now this refrigerator is a compressor-type refrigerator. It's not a gas absorption like trailer, other trailers have. This is what they're really going to a lot because it's it's lot much larger than a gas absorption and it runs on 12 volts. This is a 12 volt compressor. So when you, you can use it when you're driving down the road, your tow vehicle will keep it charged. And uh, obviously when you're plugged in, it'll it'll keep operating too. So it's a really good alternative. The, the gas absorption refrigerators that they always used are only about uh, uh, two thirds that deep, right? You gain another third not having the cooling unit in the back with that with that this style refrigerator so it's much much bigger so people really like it and that's how you latch it to keep the doors from opening okay pantry here okay let me turn some more lights on here okay top bunk bottom bunk now the water heater to access the back of the water heater where the bypass valves are, I'll just give you a general idea here. You're going to pull this mattress out, then you're going to pick up this board right here. This is split in half, and back towards the back you'll see the water heater. You'll be able to get on your knees and shimmy back there, and uh, you can switch the valves uh, from there. Okay? All right. Like I said, you have to educate yourself a little bit on that. This is the power converter. Basically, anything that can run on 12 volts DC in a trailer does. Some things have to be AC power, like the air conditioner or the microwave, the, the receptacles. Um, but the lights, the pumps, uh, things like that, or the slide room, 
those are all run on 12 volts. So what happens here is it takes regular household AC current, 110 AC, and these are regular household circuit breakers here. You see they're all labeled. Then the rest of the power is converted down to 12 volt DC on this side. And you have 12 volt automotive fuses here, uh, and they're also labeled. Um, if any of these blow, they'll actually light up, and you can see them through this tinted plastic here. Um, and also, this is a, uh, a battery tender in the sense that it'll, as long as you're plugged into shore power, it'll uh, sense how much energy your battery has, how much it needs, and if it's, if it's you know, just about charged, it'll just trickle a couple amps up to it. If it's, if it's really low, it'll send 10 amps or whatever it needs, so it'll keep your battery charged up also. All right, and there's a little fan in there that you'll hear coming on and off when there's a load put on it. Okay, this is your carbon monoxide and LP gas detector. I'll set it off for you here. Put it through the test. So it does carbon monoxide and LP gas and back to green. It should always be green. If it goes off, you, you go outside, you turn off your tanks at the front and figure out what's going on. Okay, it's a very important thing. This is your thermostat. There's three options. There's heat, there's fan, which is the air conditioner running without the compressor, and then there's cool, which is the air conditioner running with the compressor. So um, do you have a, you'll have a, a low, high, and auto selection for it. You're always going to go with auto. That's a, it's, it's, it's rare you'll have to, you would want to switch it. So just keep it on auto, and that's the way to go with it. So you push it once to light it up. See, we're going through fan low, fan high, fan, or then cool high, um, cool low, cool auto, which is what you would use, and then heat. So let's see where we're at here. There we go. Um, if, it, if you ever accidentally switch it to uh, Celsius, you just push both these buttons at the same time and switch it back to Fahrenheit. You can see here the furnace came on. I think you can hear that. Um, there's a lag time for everything. That's one thing you got to remember. You're going to have to wait five seconds or more. So when you, I turn the air conditioner on, the, the furnace will be running and then it'll take a few seconds and the air conditioner will come on and then when the furnace is done purging itself, it'll shut off so it'll run on for another minute or at least uh, when you shut it off. That's normal. Okay. If that made, hopefully that made sense to you. Shower works like any other shower. You always want to use this vent when you're using the shower. There's the switch for it. It's got a little fan in it. You open it up right there. Uh, you want to vent the humidity out, obviously, because you don't want it to get uh, damp in here. This GFCI here, all the plugs will be wired through this one, even the one on the outside. So if you're using a coffee pot outside and it pops, you're going to reset it here. Okay. Let me see here. We got some light here. Now, the toilet. There's a flush panel right here, okay. You can see it's de the trailer is dewinterized now, so it's it's ready to be camped in. All right, so the black tank is directly below. So the bottom line here is you can't use this dry. You always got to have a little bit of water in it with chemical. So when you get to the campsite, you're going to hook up your your uh, city water hose. You're going to plug it in plug the trailer in. Then you come in here and you'll take your chemical. You know, there's there's liquid chemicals, there's powder chemicals, there's pre-measured packets, all different kinds. Depends on what you decide to use. And you, you basically will put the chemical in here. Then you'll step on the pedal and it'll open the trap. And you put a gallon or two of water in there. There's, there's no way to tell exactly what a gallon or two is. You just have to sort of get the feel of it. The bottom line is you don't want to use it dry. You always want to have a little bit of water to start off with. It's very important. Um, now, when you flush this, it'll only fill about up to here, right? So if you want to use more water in it when you're using it, you can step on the pedal. And you can see there's this spot here where I can move the pedal, but the trap doesn't open. When I push this down, it'll start to fill. And water will come out, and you can fill it as full as you want, you know. The, but the thing is, you have each time you, before you use it, you'll have, to, you'll have to do this with the pedal and put as much water in it as you want. To, to use. Um, so that's that. Sink is like any other sink. Always remember that heat comes out of the bottom uh, vents, the air conditioning comes out of the top ceiling vents. Okay, I'm trying, let's see if I forgot anything here. We'll head towards the front bedroom. 
Now there's a backer plate for the where you put the TV right here. You can sort of feel it back there. It's just a thicker piece of wood. Um, so the bracket hole has got something to hold on to. So keep in mind when you put a TV bracket up, you want one that swings out over towards the, the uh, couch. And if you can find one that locks into place when it's closed, that's the best one to have because then you don't have to put straps over it. You don't have straps hanging there. So spend a little extra money and get one that locks into place when you close it. Also, the sticker is missing here, but there's a backer plate here. You can feel it. And you got video out here in the bedroom and power, so you could hang a TV right here at the foot of the bed. Okay, you got some cubbies there with power. You've got USB ports. You got like a foot locker here with totes. If I can, if you can see them here, there they are. Okay. All right. I believe I've covered everything. Um, let me just think one second. I think I've got it all here. Went over all these features. The, the windows, these are school bus type windows, so they just go up. You squeeze these in like a school bus when you're a kid. Um, these have shades that come down. All the windows have the shades, except for this one, which has a Venetian blind. 